Hi guys, my name is Peter and welcome to a new video. So if you are a person who is learning about cloud and learned about some AWS services like uh, EC2 instances, S3 bucket, Route 53, CloudFront, but haven't really built any sort of real life project that combines all these resources together, then you are in the right place because in this particular video, we are going to build a beginner friendly real life AWS project where we are going to host a react website on s3 bucket with cloudfront so it's going to be a really interesting and informative video so before moving on to the video let me give you guys a basic overview of the architecture that we are going to implement in this video so if you take a look at the architecture right over here uh, you can see that we are mainly making use of two main aws services which are aws cloudfront and an s3 bucket uh, so now let me give you guys an idea regarding how the entire architecture works so here the user is going to access the website and they are going to use uh, the cloudfront url to access the website so once the user accesses the website that request is forwarded to cloudfront so in cloudfront we set the origin as s3 bucket so as soon as a request comes onto cloudfront it is going to forward that request to s3 bucket and S3 bucket is going to respond to that request by serving the static React files. And thus the user will be able to access the website. So this is how the entire architecture works. Uh, I guess that it is straightforward. And now you might think that why am I using CloudFront right over here? So the reason for using CloudFront is mainly two. Uh, as we know that by default, uh, the S3 bucket, the objects in the S3 bucket are uh, not public. So by using CloudFront, uh, you can maintain that particular uh, security. That is, you need not make your objects public. Instead, you can authorize CloudFront to access the S3 bucket, which is a really great advantage in terms of the security perspective. And uh, the second advantage, as we know that CloudFront is a CDN service, that is a content delivery service, which means that uh, CloudFront distributes your static files across multiple uh, edge locations around the world. So if anybody tries to access your website, that re uh, request will be served from the nearest edge location, which makes the entire request response process much faster. And also once uh, a request response has been served, uh, by an edge location the entire process is cached which means that if another person tries to access from the same edge location that response will be provided from the cache which makes the entire process even more faster uh, and also there are many other benefits like uh, uh, reduced latency and also uh, cloudfront supports much better scalability so based on the traffic it can distribute it across multiple edge locations uh, so these are some of uh, the reasons for using cloudfront and also you can make use of rod 53 here as I said before, we are trying to access the website using the CloudFront URL. Instead, you can plug in your own URL by using Route 53. Uh, I'm not doing that right now because I don't have a spare uh, URL or domain to use uh, in this video, but you can easily uh, do that. And I'll also give you guys an idea regarding how you can do that uh, uh, while we are doing the practical section. Uh, so that is all about uh, the uh, architecture overview I hope that you guys got an idea regarding that now let us get started with the video so the first thing that we need is a react website so let me create one so I'm gonna open up terminal in my uh, computer and let me redirect to my desktop directory and I'm gonna create a react app so in bx create dash react dash app and I'm gonna name the uh, website as uh, my website let's run this command and wait for our react project to be created it actually takes a while so meanwhile uh, while the react app is being created let us set up our s3 bucket so let's go to aws console and i'm going to click on s3 right over here so now let's click on create bucket right over here and provide a bucket name so make sure that the name that you are going to provide is unique across uh, the global uh, s3 buckets so i'm going to name it as peter's uh, react uh, website and you can choose an aws region that you want to uh, deploy your bucket on uh, so here you can see that all of the other settings uh, i'm going to leave it as default so by default block all public access we are going to maintain this particular uh, block all public access setting and other than that i'm going to maintain all these settings as default and i'm going to click on create bucket right over here 
so our s3 bucket is all set now let's open the s3 bucket and let us wait for our react website to be created and i'll get back after that so as you can see our react project has been successfully created now let's cd onto our uh, directory that is my website and let us type in npm start to start our development server and see how our website is going to look like so this is uh, our react website so this is what we are gonna uh, deploy onto s3 bucket uh, so before moving on so let me minimize this so as we can see that this is actually uh, the uh, development version of the development server uh, we need not deploy the entire code right over here so let me kill the server as you can see that this is a website or this is a folder to our uh, react project and that is almost around 220 megabytes so because it consists of non modules and all the other uh, dependencies so we are going to create a uh, build version that can be deployed onto the production so i'm going to copy this particular command from here and let us create a build version of our react project all right so now if i open up uh, the uh, react project folder here you can see a build folder so it is almost 600 kb so if i open up that you can see all the required files like index.html the static files are here and all the other required files are right over here so this is the build folder that we are going to deploy onto our s3 bucket so let's do that I'm gonna close it and uh, right now uh, I am in uh, the S3 bucket so let me open that open that up once again so PTS react website is our S3 bucket so let's click on that and I'm gonna click on upload option right over here so first of all let's click on add files uh, let's click on desktop uh, this is the uh, react folder let's open up the build folder so I'm gonna select all the files except the static folder and I'm going to click on open and now let's click on add folder and select the static folder and click on upload let's click on upload again scroll all the way down and click on upload so now all the files are now being uploaded onto our s3 bucket and it's done let's click on close so you can see all the files are right over here so if I click on index.html and as you can see that there is an object url and if i copy it and if i paste it onto a new tab you can see that access is denied uh, so we can't really access it unless we make the uh, entire s3 bucket uh, public which we are not going to do instead what we are going to do is that we are going to open up cloudfront so i'm going to open up cloudfront right over here you can simply search for cloudfront in the search bar and uh, click on distributions and you will be in this particular page so let's click on create distribution right over here and uh, we need to select an origin domain so if i click on that you can see that our ptis react website dot s3 dot amazon aws.com is right over here so i'm going to select that and here the name is automatically been filled up so i'm going to change the origin access to origin access control settings right over here and uh, the origin access control is here and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on create control settings and here you can see that uh, the name is automatically being filled up and the origin type is S3 and I'm going to click on create uh, the name already exists so I'm going to name it as Peter react website okay let's click on create and uh, I'm going to scroll down so here I'm going to change the PUI protocol policy to HTTPS only also I'm going to change uh, the web application firewall to do not enable uh, security protections and after that I think let's click on create distribution and now AWS is going to create a CloudFront distribution for us and it is going to take a while because you can see that last modified is deploying so if I click on distributions you can see that it is still deploying and it can take a while so let's wait for the distribution to be dis deployed and I'll get back after that so as you can see that our CloudFront distribution has been successfully deployed so now let's open up our uh, distribution and another thing that we want to specify is the default root object because once we uh, get a URL you can see that the distribution domain name is right over here so this domain name need to know which file to access 
because in our S3 bucket, we know that index.html is the entry point for the website. So we need to specify that index.html is the root object. So here I'm going to click on edit right over here. And if I scroll down uh, in the default root object, I'm going to specify uh, index.html. And let us click on save changes. And now if I copy this particular distribution domain name from here and paste it on a new tab, you can see you can still see that we are not able to access it is because as of now we haven't provided cloudfront the access uh, to s3 bucket so now we need to do that so for that uh, let's click on origin right over here select the origin click on edit and if you scroll down now you can see that there is a, a, a message right over here which states that you must allow access to cloudfront using this policy statement so we need to click on copy policy from here go to our s3 bucket uh, go to uh, our bu bucket and click on permissions and uh, here under bucket policy click on edit and paste the policy that we have copied from cloudfront so what this policy means is that it is actually granting a uh, permission to our cloudfront to access this particular s3 bucket and let's click on save right over here and now if you try to access our uh, website using the cloudfront uh, domain it should actually work so i'm going to copy the domain from here and if i paste it just like that we have access to our website so this is how we can kind of uh, plug in s3 bucket cloudfront all together to deploy your website so one of the main advantage of uh, using cloudfront uh, is as i said before uh, we can still maintain the security purpose or security perspective of uh, uh, not making the entire objects in our s3 bucket public and also cdn makes the entire distribution process much more faster with reduced latency so this is the architecture that we have implemented in this particular video and as i said before you can also plug in uh, route 53 which means that if you go to uh, the cloudfront distribution right over here uh, here you can see an option for alternate domain names so if you have got a route 53 uh, domain you can uh, substitute that right over here and also um, create the required uh, dns record thus you can use your uh, custom domain with this particular uh, cloudfront so things would be much more cleaner rather than using this particular cloudfront domain so that's it guys i really hope that you guys got a basic idea regarding cloudfront s3 bucket and all these things regarding hosting a static react website on s3 thanks a lot for watching and if you have got any queries please do let me know in the comment section and i'll be more than happy to help once again thank you and i'll see you guys in another video